Hey there, my name is Tribal Instincts, and in this video, I'm gonna answer every one of your questions about mixed reality. This is the coolest thing in the world. All right, now before we begin, some of you might already know some of these things. So here are some links to the topics that I'm gonna be covering here. Uh, in the first section, I'm gonna be covering just the basic concept of what mixed reality is. And then I'm also gonna be covering how to configure your setup so that you can do mixed reality. And then finally, I'm gonna go into the post-processing, the, uh, you know, the actual making of the video that is mixed reality. All right, so what is mixed reality? To put it simply, mixed reality is the ability for you to put a real life person into what the audience sees as the game, okay? Or to take some game elements and put it into your living room. Like Tilt Brush, there's a few videos out there that show like somebody painting basically in their room. My particular favorite though is whenever you put the person in the game. Um, I have two examples so far. One is in uh, Swordmaster VR and the other one's in Gorn. Don't let small children watch that one, by the way. It's horribly gory. Uh, but anyway, uh, so you actually get the person into the game. It's, it's an amazing view. It is really an awesome way of showing people what VR is. So this is it, right? This is mixed reality. So how is this done? From the game's perspective, they are giving you two different layers of the view. One is basically everything in the game, which is the foreground and the background, uh, all of the shadows, all of the really interesting things. Uh, and then you also get a separate layer, which is the foreground, meaning anything that is closer to the camera than the actual person. And how do they know which one is closer? So before you actually go into the setup, you have to position a digital camera exactly where your physical real life camera is. And that way, anything that is before or closer to the, the camera than the actual headset is considered the foreground. And so they render that out separately so that at the end of the day, you can sandwich them together. You can put that foreground before my actual camera, uh, key out the green screen, put the background behind it, and there you have it. You have everything that you need in order to give a very convincing mixed reality view. So how do you set up mixed reality? I'm gonna be upfront and blunt with you. Mixed reality is a painful process on your first time through. Okay, so give yourself a good hour, maybe two, and make sure you're in a pretty calm state of mind because you are going to want to rip your hair out before you successfully get your first mixed reality video. So you need three things in order to get mixed reality going. One, the game just has to support it, okay? Most Unity games right now, they're coming out with mixed reality by default, and the developers may have to do some tweaking with their games in order to get it to work right, but I've had a few games that just come right out of the box and they just work, even if the developers don't even know about it, which was the case for Swordmaster VR. He was totally surprised by that video. Uh, but on top of that, you also need a config file inside the root game directory folder uh, to give the actual positional data of your real life camera. And that is the most painful part of this process, okay, is getting that configuration file generated the first time because it needs to be spot on with your real camera. And that includes the XYZ coordinates, the rotation data, as well as the field of view. Uh, so getting that set the first time is hard, but then you can just copy and paste it into other directories and then you're fine. You also need a third controller. If you already have a third controller, then great, you're already good to go. Just turn it on, you're ready. If you don't have a third controller, don't sweat it. You're not completely in trouble yet. Uh, I don't even have a third controller, which by the way, if you're HTC or Valve and you're watching this, please contact me. I desperately need one. Uh, I, would, I would absolutely love to be able to have some more narrated uh, mixed reality views. But anyway, that aside, if you don't have one, you can get away with a fake one. Um, I'm gonna put a link in the description below to a fantastic site. This is actually the guide that I used in order to get my mixed reality going. They have some links to download a fake third controller. Uh, you also have to, uh, to modify your config settings to allow it to be a fake controller, uh, but that's in their guide entirely. I'll let you go through that. Uh, but once you have that, then you are ready to go. Now that config part, this would not be a very good guide if I didn't show you guys how to get your camera's config file created. So please respect the fact that I am about to put myself through a very painful process for you. My camera is set up right now. I'm about to move my camera and reset it up just for you guys, okay? Ah, I'm not looking forward to this, but here we go. Uh, so on that same site that I just linked to below, uh, they have a tool to help you with this, which my gosh, that makes things so much better. Uh, so I'm about to walk through that process of using that, that uh, tool in order to generate that config file. All right, so for the purpose of this one, I am putting my camera on top of my portable AC unit. This is a really stupid idea because I'm just gonna have to redo this later on, but I don't have anything else to give me the angle that I want. Oh well. All right, so tip number one in order to get yourself configured easily or at least as easily as possible. Take some tape, put a crosshair on your camera's view, and then go mark where that exact center point is. 
it's kind of a guessing game. I'm looking at my computer way over there, but uh, right around there. Let's see if that lined up. Put up and to the left. If you have a second person to do this with, it goes a lot easier. Half an inch more and we are golden. All right, so this is the exact center of my camera. The next step is to get the digital representation of the game lined up directly with that camera. All right, so this is the camera align tool. Instructions, quit set the position of the camera by using the grip buttons. So we can move it around. You'll notice that it was previously way up there. All right, so as it turns out, showing you guys this without the use of actual mixed reality is really hard. And I can't do that since I'm editing the mixed reality configuration right now. So I'm gonna edit this in and try to give you guys an idea of what it is that I'm seeing. So now we need to start this. So I'm gonna hit start and I'm gonna take this and I'm going to, in the real world, put this camera as close as I can to the real thing without bumping it. All right, there it is. So now, <laughs> now we have the tricky part of getting this thing and we want this little end right there matching up exactly with the very front of this camera, okay? So it's just a matter of going like this over and over again until you get it right. So that's pretty close actually, a little bit forward. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now we obviously want it down. A little bit more. All right, so that's pretty good right there. Um, whenever I take it up and down, I mean, it's pretty close. I think this thing is just like a half inch too high, uh, but as long as it's really, really close, you're gonna have good results. So I think that's good enough right there. All right, now rotation. Rotation uh, is somewhat of a tricky thing unless you do things just right. So the first thing we need to do is use this piece of tape here. So I am going to be trying to get this blue line, which wow, it's currently intersecting my face, uh, down and over here. So first off, let's move it this way. So what do we got here? That's moving it down. That is pretty close. Guys, I'm gonna call that good. All right, so now that we have the camera's starting point and the camera's pointing location, now we need to change the, uh, you know, the rotation uh, or the tilt of it. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go over to OBS and I'm going to capture the game window and put my camera on top of it. This isn't a full mixed reality thing. I am only grabbing the camera align tool and I am cropping it by 528. Here, let's show you what this game looks normally. I'm grabbing this view down here, okay? This is the background view and that crop rotation is cropping out the top by 528 and the right by 960. And there we have this view. In order to get this set up correctly, the best thing that I found to do is take a controller, put it on the far left, and make this one, the one that has the config settings. And then over here, put another one. All right, so what do we have here? We have the, oh wow, that's actually pretty close already. Uh, so we need to drop th this one over here. Uh, it needs to be a little bit lower. All right, let's make the this line go down a little bit. All right, let's give that a look. Didn't have much of an effect at all. Let's keep going. I think I'm actually going the wrong way. That's better. And this is why things are hard to set up in mixed reality, because you make mistakes, and mistakes cost a lot of time usually. All right, now we got that, so let's check the offset now. What do those look like? So, where is it? This one right down here, that is pretty dadgum close. The one on the left still needs to be slightly tweaked uh, in the same direction, so I'm gonna add a few more to the Z. How's that? that is, that's pretty close. All right, now that's really close right there. Um, both of them are pretty close, uh, relatively tilted. Uh, so now I need to change it just slightly. I think I need to raise the pointing location just a little bit up. All right, that right there is pretty dadgum spot on. Uh, now you'll notice that they're a little bit uh, closer in, right? So I have this one just a little bit farther out. Now let's bring them in. Let's, let's see what happens if they're in the dead center. You guys can't see it because I was in the way. 
and there's a delay, by the way, ignore that delay. So that is really close. Now, you'll notice the farther away that these controllers get from each other, the more distance they, are, they have, All right? So that's a field of view issue, although that is, gosh, that is really close. I'm even hesitant to even mess with this. That is, that is pretty dadgum spot on. Uh, the only thing that I might do on this is bring in my game window ever so slightly, make it a little bit smaller. You could also change the field of view in order to get this done. Yep, that is mixed reality. All right, now that we have that, I, we are done. I would encourage you to take note of your uh, position here because I've had issues where it actually doesn't save, but let's see if it does. Hit save, so what is that? Negative 235, negative 2.35. I'm gonna open up the file, make sure that it saved it. Ah, it edited it today, we are good. There it is. This is my positional data. That is the relative location of my digital camera or my real camera uh, in the digital world. All right, post-processing. Uh, this part is a little bit painful only on the first run. After that, it's actually pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna be doing all this in Premiere Pro. However, the principles apply to pretty much any editing software that you could have, as long as it can track some alpha layers. All right, so here we have the four quadrants. Uh, remember, the top left, this is going to be your foreground elements. This is everything before the camera. The bottom left, this is everything behind you. This up here, this is the alpha layer. This is incredibly important and valuable in making sure that you can filter this out and actually do it properly. Uh, this one, don't worry about it too much, the background layer, or the, this is like the, the, the forward facing view. However, if the developer is not actually really supporting mixed reality, this is only like, it's, well, it's pretty much useless. All you're getting is one fourth in like the bottom right of the actual view. Um, some games support it, some games don't, but uh, these three, these are pretty reliable. So the first thing I do in any one of my videos that I edit is making sure that the audio and the visuals are in sync. The way I do this is by pulling up this right here. This is an audio video sync test. Okay, uh, it just, it's a metronome, right? And so over here, you can see these little spikes. This is my camera. Uh, yep, this one right here, this is my camera. And so I hear, I play it out through my speakers, so it's in both the game recorded um, audio and the real one, or in the, uh, the, yeah, the real camera. So I'm gonna line these, these guys up as close as I possibly can. That's pretty good right there. Now that we have these in sync, I'm going to skip through all of this. All of this was here was me messing around and testing it and failing. Uh, so we're gonna get rid of all that junk. And now we have this. We have the game view and we have the camera view. And that's all that we need. Now remember, the goal of this is to make sure that we can have this top list view on top of the camera view, which both of those will be on top of this background view. Now this right here is black. You can see I can't see through that. That's what this is for. You need to use this, this is called an alpha mat. You need to use this to tell the editing software what in this is good to keep. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. The way I'm gonna do this is by making three separate subsequences. This is gonna be my alpha, my foreground, and my background. The reason why I do this is really only important for the alpha and foreground layer. In Premiere Pro, at least, whenever you crop and you resize an item, it doesn't actually treat that as being a real change into the actual final image for the purpose of an alpha mat, meaning it's still gonna think that this alpha mat should apply to something in this corner even if it's completely blown up. So anyway, uh, just a small little tidbit, uh, separate out at least the alpha and the foreground into a separate subsequence before you do any of the actual editing. Now I've already done this a couple times, so I have some presets saved in order to help me speed this along. Um, I have a preset for changing the size for the alpha layer. That'll put that right in the full screen. For the foreground, there we are, that's the top left. And also the background, done. Now I have all of those, I'm gonna bring them all into this footage or into this composite. Now that I have these in here, I'm gonna do a little bit of house cleaning. I am going to move up my alpha footage, put my camera in between the alpha and the background. Oops, and alpha should be on top of the foreground. All right, and now we have everything we need in order to start the editing process. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add a track matte key to the foreground layer. 
I'm going to go into it. I'm going to edit it, and I'm going to say that this is video five for the alpha layer. There's that, and I'm going to use Matt Loom. Luma, sorry. There we have it. So now that is completely ready for us to start using it. And now I'm just going to add an ultra key. This is to get rid of the green screen. Let's grab this. Set it to aggressive just to make my life easier on this. There we go. Ah, my camera size. So whenever you record a quadrant at 1080p resolution, you're actually getting four subsections, right? So it's considerably smaller. Um, so for the purpose of the mixed reality, I actually have my final composite be at 720 uh, resolution. So I need to scale down my game camera down to that as well. So that's one third. There we have it. That should be pretty dadgum close. Let's take a look. Voila. That's it. Guys, that is all it takes in order to get mixed reality up and going. All right, guys, that is it. Good luck to you, okay? Drop me a message below if you have any problems. I can't say that I'm gonna be able to offer, you know, one-on-one -on -one support for everybody, uh, but if it's a general question uh, or if I miss anything here, please drop a comment below and I would love to try to help if I can. Uh, the mixed reality is, is fantastic. It is the best way to get virtual reality out there and for people to really understand what it is. So I really want as many people as possible in order to make these, these videos. So if you like this, please hit the like button below. If you didn't like it, hit the downvote button and let me know what I can do to make these videos better. And if you want to see more videos from me, hit subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.